So now let's go one more step and look at the enterprise value multiple, EV enterprise value divided by EBIT. Now we see that basically if we could think about this, we could think about net assets as sort of the book value of assets and divided by EBIT. It's sort of like, oh, well, if you didn't do anything better than just have to create value, anything other than the book value divided by EBIT. And this is the effects of growth and the fact of return on invested cap, the relationship between invested capital and weighted, excuse me, and weighted average cost of capital. Weighted average cost of capital, all right? So firms can have a high enterprise EBIT multiple, okay, if they have two things. First, a very high growth rate, but what's equally important is the relationship between return on invested capital and the way it average cost of capital is. It's not just the growth rate, okay? So we sort of say, oh, enterprise multiples are larger, okay, uh, the higher the growth of the firm. That's true, but it's not true unless the firm is able to invest at a rate, invest and earn more than their required rate of return all right, in the future, okay? Unless they do that. If they're only earning, basically if they're earning, now if, okay, the return on invested capital is just equal to the weighted average cost of capital, then this ratio here is just going to be one, all right? And what it means is that even if the firm's sales grow up, they invest more, they're not going to increase the value today. Nobody's going to pay for that today because those projects basically are zero NPV projects. So what's key here for not only growth, not only growth, but you also have to have return on invested capital being greater than the weighted average cost of capital in order for the enterprise value, excuse me, EBIT multiple to be high. Okay, so it requires both of those things, not just growth not just growth. All right. So again, let me emphasize. There's three things, there's a couple things that go into it. There's this, this, and this. Now, uh, clearly there is a relationship between return on invested capital and EBIT. And the idea here is, is that the higher the return on, on, excuse me, return on invested capital is equal to EBIT times one minus the tax rate divided by net assets. So what's clear is if EBIT goes up, okay, then return on invested capital goes up. Now there's a little bit over here where, effect, where it has an effect on the multiple for the, the uh, net assets, uh, excuse me, over here, the book value multiple. But basically the whole idea is that in return on invested capital, the firm becomes more profitable Okay, its EBIT margin increases. Okay, its return on invested capital is going to go up. Okay, that's the basic idea here. All right.